There are big plans to revitalize a small neighborhood on the edge of Pioneer Square. How do city and community leaders envision taking back public spaces while honoring the city's Native American roots? When they walk in, they're going to know their home. But public safety has become a growing concern downtown. We can't have a tolerance for people who may be assaulting or victimizing others. Will the city and county's vision to activate public spaces pay off? There's a real problem and we need to address it. Our studio panel weighs in. It is intentionally set up to welcome everyone in. And there are opportunities for more businesses, more housing. We're going to make it happen. Kicking off a municipal makeover this summer. Next on City Inside Out. Welcome to this edition of City Inside Out. I'm your host, Brian Callanan. City Hall Park, the grassy area just south of the King County Courthouse, down to the Chief Seattle Club, a social services facility a few blocks west, is about to get a major revitalization. Native American leaders, along with city and county authorities, are working to take on the homeless encampments, drug use, and other challenges in this location. The hope is this effort will serve as a new innovative approach to Seattle's homeless crisis with help from some age-old Native traditions, restoring some lost cultural connections in the effort to reclaim a public space. Inside the walls of the Chief Seattle Club is what Derek Belgard calls a sacred space to nurture, renew, and affirm the spirit of Native Americans. The Native person come in here and feel the connectedness of their culture in here. But outside this social services center, food pantry, and medical clinic on the 2nd Avenue extension downtown is another story. This neighborhood has a lot of hardships. Belgard, deputy director of the Chief Seattle Club, says after years of oppression, Native Americans are the least likely demographic to accept social services. And in King County, seven times more likely to be homeless than any other ethnic group. We're at a place now where there's a lack of trust, a lack of willingness to accept help from outside indigenous um, systems. But, Belgard says, there could be some hope ahead in the form of a new $38 million expansion project planned here. The top four will be uh, housing, 80 units of low-income studios. Crews will break ground this November to build a new seven-story building in place of the now vacant Lazarus Center next door to the Chief Seattle Club. The new facility will have 80 low-income housing units commercial and office space, a health clinic, and artwork, including a 40-foot-tall representation of a welcoming Coast Salish woman. When they walk in, they're going to know their home. Belgard says, by making a strong effort at cultural recognition, the Chief Seattle Club can provide Native Americans a more integrated way to accept services and start a road to recovery. They're going to feel that connection again, and they're going to want to be in there. They're going to feel safe when they're at home. <laughs> That idea is right in tune with what the city of Seattle is working on around the corner in City Hall Park, just south of the King County Courthouse. At 1.3 acres, this is the largest green space in Pioneer Square. We're on the front lines of change. Philip Kraft supervises the concierge program in this and other parks around the city. Year-round, the concierges set up games, live music, and other activities to activate the park working to change what's traditionally been a homeless camp into an area where everybody feels welcome. We do have a homeless crisis. Uh, we also have a rich, diverse community, you know, of uh, all cultures. And that's what we do is we create a safe place for everyone. The activation plan at City Hall Park, begun last year, is financed in part through the city's use of King County Parks levy funds. And Kraft says, with help from Seattle's park rangers and other support, Seattle is creating a new future for City Hall Park. This is a great example of proactively, positively transforming things. Instead of waiting for things to get bad, we're changing things for the better. That's welcome news for Lisa Howard, who says there are many challenges around this northeast corner of the Pioneer Square neighborhood. It's definitely underutilized. It's been neglected quite a bit. Howard is executive director of the Alliance for Pioneer Square. 
who's well aware that dispatchers started sending double the usual amount of firefighters to calls in this area last May following safety concerns. We can't have a tolerance for people who may be assaulting or victimizing others. She's hoping City Hall Park can emulate the success of Occidental Square Park a few blocks away. With games, a kiosk for park staff, and more. Plus, thanks to financial help from the Downtown Seattle Association since 2015, this park has increased visits and reduced illegal activity. The Alliance will start a master planning process this summer to help revitalize City Hall Park, Prefontaine Square and Fountain, and Fortson Square outside the Chief Seattle Club as a way to reconnect Pioneer Square to downtown. In a neighborhood with the city's highest concentration of shelters and social services, Howard is trying to create some harmony between the residents of Pioneer Square, if they have a roof over their heads or not. Constantly sweeping people around and leaving them outside for years on end isn't a solution. And if it's not working now, let's try something else. We want our parks to be healthy and safe and accessible for everyone. Will focusing on roughly six blocks end Seattle's homeless emergency? No. But Derek Belgard says this effort could turn into a model of how a culturally relevant, neighborhood-focused plan can create a pathway to change. It's a crisis that we all have to jump in and we all have to come up with solutions together. Joining us to discuss this further, we have with us Councilmember Sally Bagshaw. Sally, good to have you. Very, very good to be back with you. We also have with us Colleen Echohawk. She is Executive Director of the Chief Seattle Club. Colleen, good to have you too. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And finally, we have Jenny Kowalczyk. She is Communications Director for the Alliance for Pioneer Square. Jenny, good to have you too. Happy to be here. All right, here we go. I want to start by looking big picture at what's going on here. This revitalization plan from City Hall Park down to Chief Seattle Club. Councilmember Bagshaw, this is an idea you've been considering for some time, ever since you were working across the street at the courthouse there. Where were we and how did we get to this day? What did it take to make this project a reality from your perspective? Well, for starters, we have good partners like with the Alliance and with Colleen Echo Hawks Chief Seattle Club, but we've also had a lot of support from King County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to specifically yeah. recognize the judges that are there, Carolyn Whalen, who has worked on facilities. But we've got people in our parks department with the folks in the courthouse, DESC across the street, yeah. Downtown Seattle Association, and these two as yeah. examples that are bringing people together and we have a shared vision. Okay, and we'll talk more about that vision in just a minute. But Colleen, similar question to you. Mm -hmm. Chief Seattle Club is in this process of pulling off a major project yeah. here, $38 yeah. million dollar expansion to add yeah. 80 incomes of low-income housing and some other mm -hmm. services too. I know some people didn't think this was going to happen. How did mm -hmm. we get here? This sounds like it was quite an uphill battle <laughs> to get the funding to get yeah. to where we are today. We yeah. believed in Colleen Echo. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, well tell well, us how this worked. Well, you know, it's done in a lot of support and partnership, including Councilmember Bagshaw. Mm -hmm. I was, we were talking the other day about one of an, uh, a meeting we had maybe three years ago where it just seemed like it wasn't going to be possible. You know, mm -hmm. we had this idea and this vision, and um, we came up against some odds and people saying, you know, we just don't think you can do it. But we had great support with um, uh, City Hall. We had support from the neighborhood. And we had support, most of all, from our members, the members of Chief Seattle Club who've experienced homelessness in this city for many years. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have some resilient, strong, strong um, members and staff and board members who said, we have to do this. We have folks who are experiencing homelessness at much, much higher rates, we as Native yeah. community need to respond to that and build this housing. Okay. So we're really excited about the possibilities. Thank you for that. Jenny, I'll move to you. I want to take a look at this project from that business perspective. Mm -hmm. We heard it in our setup piece, this northeast edge of Pioneer Square has been a neglected spot for many, many years. It's surrounded by social services there, as you know. For you, what galvanized this revitalization effort to get us where we are today? I think seeing the success in Occidental Square Park, yeah. also the revitalization in Pioneer Square Park, really talking about the east-west connections to the waterfront as well. Yeah. There's a ton of opportunities, and then also with the improvements that you're making, it was the right time. All the chips kind of fell into place, yeah. and this neglected area, being able to take it and say, we have a great example of what this could be like. How do we get there? How do we partner together in order to make this happen? Yeah, well, thank you for that. And Jenny, I'm going to stick with you to talk about some of the issues. I just want to make sure I identify what we're talking about here. Um, uh, we brought some of this up in the setup piece too. Firefighters concerned about their safety in this Pioneer Square area. Some incidents of violence, some threats. Pioneer Square is a spot I know the mayor is putting some new emphasis patrols on when it comes to crime or whatever else. What are the problems that the Alliance has been dealing with in this, in this area? How concerned are local businesses about what's happening? 
So local businesses are concerned, but what we're seeing is that this is not specific to just Pioneer Square. We have the multiple different districts, Soto, Fremont, yeah. for example, downtown. Everyone's coming together saying there's a real problem and we need to address it. There are some unfortunate circumstances which make Pioneer Square a hot spot for some of this activity. A lot of that is our public space and having open green space, open public parks, mm -hmm. but then also having the human services in such a concentrated area. You have to think about who your users of the space are, and right now those are the users of the space. So mm -hmm. it creates some challenges, but businesses are sticking it out, really looking forward to what's coming up next, these big projects, yeah. especially the waterfront redevelopment plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a huge piece of this. Yeah. We're not going to talk specifically about, right. but an important piece. Colleen, help me understand some of these different issues here and the challenges, if you could. Again, something in the setup piece, we talked about this. Native Americans, the least likely demographic to accept so social services, mm -hmm. more likely to be homeless than any other ethnic group. Mm -hmm. What is happening? What are these larger cultural issues, challenges in, in place right now? Well, we just know that there have been many systems that have been really set up to keep Native people um, out of the mainstream, right? So we have, even in the city of Seattle in 1865, there was that city ordinance that said, Native people are not allowed here, right? Wow. You're not allowed yeah. to be in the city. And that started this crisis of homelessness in the Native community that continues to reverberate um, to today. And so many of our folks are just really cautious and, and a little bit of afraid um, and don't feel comfortable in some of our wonderful mainstream organizations who are offering wonderful services, but because of just the fear of of institutions, there's a hesitancy um, that my relatives have about um, going into some of these services. So we know at the Chief Seattle Club, we, we provide really specific cultural programming mm -hmm. and services that help our relatives feel good about being there. And we know that our new project will also um, carry on that same vision and mission. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sally, I, I, I really look at this as possibly, this neighborhood at least, as a microcosm of Seattle's larger homelessness crisis because there are some cultural issues. Sure, there is some crime. There are some tensions for local residents and businesses too. Uh, before we talk about solutions, and we will get into that next, but I want to know about your concerns regarding what you're hearing from Colleen, what you're hearing from uh, from Jenny here, from many others who live and work in this area. You used to work there too. Right, absolutely, and things had not changed for 20 years. We kept seeing the same problems over and over again. People that are in tents, people that are lying on the sidewalks, sick, it, not having the connections that they need. Mental illness issues too, absolutely. of course. Absolutely, yeah. we've got that and behavioral health issues. But we weren't making progress, and it really got started, seriously, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. through Colleen, through the Alliance, and um, bringing to, atten to our attention that we're just spiraling, you know, and we're just doing the same things over and over again, and that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So that's when we started focusing um, in my office on City Hall Park, and it was actually because of the Alliance said, yeah. come down and talk to us yeah. about this. And then as soon as we had that energy yeah. and focused on the park, on the Prefontaine Fountain, yep. around the corner at Fortson Square, the work that Chief Seattle Club is doing, yep. across the street with the Metropole and all the way down the yep. 2nd Avenue extension. Yep. People are saying this could be such an incredible opportunity yep. to bring back more affordable housing, to bring the community together to solve the problem. So yep. I'm really impressed with them, yep. the work that these organizations are doing, and, and Colleen and Jenny in particular. Let, let's keep going down that path, and Sally, yeah, I'll sure. stick with you, and we'll kind of head down the line talking about these different solutions here. We're talking about changes to the built environment right. around this area, bringing in some City Hall music concerts down yeah, to this yeah. park, I know. Uh, what is the public going to see this summer going ahead, and, and how are these yeah. plans going well, to help? Well, it started last year, and I really yeah. want to say thanks to Christopher Williams and Parks, mm -hmm. because they prioritized for us, and I said, we really need to move on some of these things. Mm -hmm. So they came in and pruned these historic trees. And let me tell you, that was a big deal yeah. to be able to, right. to, to right. do that. Um, and then they brought in clean light globes. Now, I've been down there, well, pretty much the better part of 30 years. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd ever seen those light bulbs right, clean. Right, right. And suddenly it was like lighter and brighter, and yeah. they brought in the games, mm -hmm. and the judges are out playing cornhole sure, I mean, sure. at lunch and having the food trucks there. Yeah, yeah. So people began to feel, hey, this is a park for yeah, all of us, yeah. and there's going to be more. Just the little festival lighting mm -hmm. that we added in the alley, yeah. People, I mean, it, that was not a big expenditure. Right. But people feel so much better. Right. So it's inclusive what you showed in your setup piece mm -hmm. about the diversity in the yeah. area. We want everybody to come. 
just like what they did in Bryant Park in New York mm -hmm. City. Mm -hmm. That was a place nobody would yeah. go a decade ago. Now it's one of the coolest places yeah, ever. That's... So this is the kind of thing that we can do. Yeah, uh, Colleen, I'll bring in here. I, I want to make sure that we really get into this idea of uh, cultural recognition, a big mm -hmm. motivator I know behind this project. Yeah. The idea is to make a stronger connection to Native American people who might need help, mm -hmm. so they're actually getting services, et cetera. Yeah. Talk about that if you can, and these and these other larger changes, I think, that, yeah. that you're hoping to see in this neighborhood. Yeah, I love talking about this. I'm, so, I'm so excited yeah. to share with you about this. Uh, because one thing you'll hear me say often, I know Sally has heard me say this many times, is that, you know, we're in a city, one of the only major cities in the country named after a chief. And we have um, very little uh, representation of native architecture, design um, in, in our city. That sends a message to a whole community. When we're largely invisible in the design and architecture um, in this beautiful city that we all love. And so I'm very excited about our project that's going to look and feel like a native building from the outside to the inside. And we want it to influence our whole neighborhood. We want this to be um, an opportunity for the business partners in Pioneer Square mm -hmm. and the commuters and our homeless community and the native community all to find one awesome place to be. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a cafe on our bottom floor that will open out into Fortson Square and we are really excited about partnering with the city and with the Alliance to create this beautiful area for all people to come into so that'll be part of our plan as we move forward right and so I just yeah, want to say the community gathering space mm -hmm. that yeah. you have yeah. described and working with Jones and Jones yeah. architect it's amazing <clears throat> and SDOT has stepped up and we've put money in to be able to support this idea right, right. but instead of this it being just like outside it, the club yeah right yeah. and it is right now like the least welcoming place that you could, yeah, you broken could concrete ever want. And all that. Oh yeah, right. just not it's just not yeah. funny, right? Yeah. And yeah. so being able to say this is going to be a community gathering space and that's something that Colleen yeah. has inspired the community about Kate, come and yeah. learn more about us, yeah. be part of us. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, Jenny, I'll bring you in here. I want to talk about the process that the Alliance is going to be going through over the next couple months here, working off this activation, the Chief Seattle Club breaking ground this fall. You're going to create a master plan for this neighborhood. I want to talk about what that means, what sort of services are you expecting to see? Is it restrooms? What, what are we talking about here? <laughs> so we're really excited at the um, opportunity to look at City Hall Park and the surrounding area as a whole because you can really influence this park, this public space, but then you also need to think about how the built environment around it is going to support it and how there's going to be this community relationship because yeah. that's what it is at the end of the day and Sal I'm happy you brought up Bryant Park having you know managed for DSA Occidental Square you have to think about the users of the space mm -hmm. and it's not plug-and-play it's not like a, a stamp and bringing what's in Occidental to City Hall Park we have grass there which is amazing and you think about an urban environment how can we look at the 30,000 foot view make the built environment support City Hall Park mm -hmm. and make that space a space where people want to come and yeah. want to enjoy and feel safe coming. And yeah. so having transportation options around it, I'm happy that you're bringing retail mm -hmm. and retail for all. Yeah. And I think that's really important. So thinking about the surrounding buildings, surrounding areas and saying, how do we reinvigorate this? How do yeah. we look at the Metropole building, at public art, yeah. et cetera, in order to support the park? And we have uh, funding additionally from Historic South Downtown. We received a grant just last week, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so that'll help us really get this off the ground and right. think about the area as a whole. Uh, Sally, can I bring you back yeah. in here? I mean, are we talking about bringing in restrooms? I know you were talking about the Prefontaine Fountain earlier, which unfortunately is the biggest urinal in the city, but uh, trying to do some different things with this built environment. I know some different metro mm -hmm. pieces and Involved too with cleaning up some things there. Right. Talk about what we might see. Please. Well, I would love to be able to see something like a Portland Loo down there. Okay. And I've been working on that for 10 years. And I will tell you, honestly, it has been the most frustrating thing. People have concerns about having an unmanaged place. Mm -hmm. um, they're concerned about what goes on inside. Yes. They're concerned about what bad behavior yeah. leaves. And, I remember and, the one by the Pike Place Market. That, uh, was, yeah, that was a deal. Right. Well, I still think there's opportunities, okay. but we've been told by some of our superior court judges that they don't want to start there. Mm. You know, as the particularly City Hall Park develops, they want the quick wins. Yeah. And I do want to acknowledge, okay. you know, down, downtown Seattle been working on this. I yeah. don't think we're going to see. So I made an alternative proposal. Well, how about a how about a hand washing station? Sure, sure. Okay. That's something that San Diego has been doing partly mm -hmm. from the hepatitis A. Sure. And I've been told they don't want that either. Okay. So okay. I don't think we're there. Okay. Um, but it may be in the future. Okay. Okay. I, I want to make sure that I, I head down this one path with you here, and and Sally. 
I know that there is a concern that often comes up in situations like this. When there is this concerted effort to re revitalize one neighborhood, that can displace homeless people, let's say. That can displace criminal activity to another neighborhood. How do you make sure that doesn't happen with this effort around City Hall well, Park? Well, partly, this is going to be a park for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not an effort to shoo people away. It's an effort to bring people together. Okay. We're going to have more tables and chairs out there this summer music, the mm -hmm. games, people are welcome here. Yeah. And that's the message that Colleen's been sending yeah. too with her community. You are welcome here and so are others. Yeah. And I believe that the community gathering space, what we're doing in City Hall, and you brought up the uh, Prefontaine Fountain. Yeah, right, Thank you right. very much. Sure. My goal is to make that a spectacular, mm -hmm. Not it was our first fountain, mm -hmm. 100 years ago it was built. Um, Part of the discussion now is to move it over to City Hall Park yeah. because it's right next to the Sound Transit Tunnel entrance, right. and it's been dead for at least 30 years. Yeah. Move it over to City Hall Park, recognize some of the great elements that are there now, okay. acknowledge that it was Prefontaine Fountain, yeah. build it up. My, my belief is that it ought to be a destination fountain. Okay. You know, maybe my dreams of having Bellagio are okay. a bit much, but you know, yeah, something pump the, that the, pump the brakes there. Back something, right. something, yeah. something, right. something that the neighborhood would like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Colleen, I want to make sure I bring you in here because Sorry. I think this concern about displacing problems that mm -hmm. might be happening in this northeast corner mm -hmm. of Pioneer Square are real. And, and I yeah. want to make sure I get your response to that piece of it. Yeah, I think that that is um, a concern that we should all have. You know, there is um, a history of displacement in this city. I think that what we're seeing here is real intentionality, though, to not make that um, a reality. We yeah. have worked with all these neighborhood partners. We are being very intentional about our space um, at the new T Seattle Club building mm -hmm. and then also in front of our building to make sure that it is it is intentionally set up to welcome everyone in. Will there be problems along the way? Of course. Will we make some mistakes? of course, yeah. but we are trying to do our very best to set up a place that is positive and feels good for everyone in the neighborhood, yeah. especially our homeless community. Can I ask you what you would like to see in that City Hall Park area? I know it's not right outside yeah. uh, what you're doing at Chief Seattle yeah. Club, but what do you want to see there? Well, I want to see all of the things that have been mentioned yeah, here yeah. already. Like, uh, I'm, I love the food trucks. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. the games and things that are there. I also would love to see some more Native art. Yeah. Um, we have just a real amazing possibilities to see authentic Coast Salish art mm -hmm. um, in that park. Could just be amazing. I can, imagining, you know, sculptures and murals and mm -hmm. all kinds of possibilities that could yeah. really liven that space and mm -hmm. really make it authentic to the true historic nature of that space. I know. Uh, maybe renaming some. Streets there. I thought I saw a blurb on that too. Oh yes, we'll I <laughs> I have a passion about the uh, renaming some of our streets. Mm -hmm. For instance, the street in front of my building is mm -hmm. called Second Avenue Extension has South. A, has a real ring to it. Yeah. yeah. I think we can do better than that. <laughs> okay. This is an yeah. imaginative, creative city. Yeah. I think we could, um, na you know, come, go out to some of the tribes and say, what What would you like to name this right. this city or this? Sorry, this um, street. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of opportunity there to yeah. bring back some of the 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 Coast Salish language yeah. um, in our city. Thank Thank you for that. I want to make sure, sure I got that Thank point you. across. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jenny, your, your thoughts too. Just uh, this displacement issue I think is real. I know businesses that I've talked to in the past have, have brought this up. Mm -hmm. Your concerns about it, what are businesses saying around the area there? I think businesses are looking for these public spaces to, again, be public spaces for all. We want everyone to be welcome. And one thing that we really encourage and having worked with DSA and their outreach team you can be here and you can have positive engagement and activity here and everyone is welcome. The only thing we don't ask is that negative activity is not allowed here. So it's really creating this positive environment and just saying, we don't mind who you are, where you come from, you can be here, all are welcome. Just no, no negative activity. And that's okay, and people respect that. And when you have that respect in public spaces, I think people really honor it. Yeah. And to your point, when we have really great public art in spaces, yeah. I know yeah. people are sometimes concerned about graffiti, so on and so forth. When things are done really well, people respect it. Yeah. And I think that's what we'll end up seeing um, you know, in City Hall Park and other public yeah. spaces around the area. Okay. If I can just jump in and say that our homeless community, they want safe space. Mm -hmm. They don't want this negative They're behavior. They're very often they, preyed on, they, most they, often, yeah, yes. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. so creating these kind of opportunities for safety and security and for comfort, even, mm -hmm. is really important. And, and I, I just want to say that I absolutely believe that it is a human, it's part of our, our humanity at this city to provide bathrooms 
we have to figure something out. Yeah. Like there are people that are suffering. I believe that this is an amazing city with some of the best humans in the whole world. Mm -hmm. If anyone can figure this out, we can. Right. Okay. We have amazing leadership okay. that wants to bring this forward and we just have to be creative and, and, and try it. Yep. Right. Yeah. And I, I completely <clears throat> concur with that. And I know we've had problems with our public restrooms yep. in the past, but San Francisco is a model that works. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they, they have a manager there at each one of the public mm -hmm. stations. Yeah. Those individuals are re-entering. They have mm -hmm. come back from prison. Sure. They have a radio so that they can talk to a supervisor. So they're there for six months. They can have something on their resume yeah. that says, mm -hmm. here's an individual okay. with new job skills. Okay. Well, and it, it feels really good. Yeah. So I am a fan. I believe we ought to try it. Everybody's going to go somewhere. And yeah. if mm -hmm. you right, don't have right. a public restroom, yeah. you know, yeah. okay. the businesses get the pleasure mm -hmm. of cleaning up yeah. in the morning. Yeah. No, this is a very important part of it. Thank you all for bringing this up. I need to start wrapping up the show here. There's been a great conversation. Thank you very much. I'd like to talk about your hopes for this revitalization <laughs> project going into the future. What are you hoping to see? Who's going to be paying for the cost? involved, if we could touch on that, please, and how do you sustain this effort? Mm -hmm. Jenny, if I could start with you and we'll head this way, please. Absolutely. So we're really happy to have partners on board who are focusing on the larger overall scope that will feed our master planning mm -hmm. process as well and kind of be this relationship and conversation. And so we can get partners involved and say, we think this should be done for the entire area. You're already doing this really great focus. How do we help you and how do you help us with this overall goal? So I think we're really excited to see the whole entire space really come to life mm -hmm. and helping with our business development um, team in order to place the right people and make Pioneer Square this fantastic favorite fabric part of the neighborhood yeah. and just continue our really great work. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Colleen, some final thoughts here. How do we get to this point of the future here? Where does the money come from? How do you make it sustainable, mm -hmm. please? Yeah. It's going to take a lot of effort. It already has taken a lot of effort. But every time I tell someone the story and say, hey, this is the opportunity, we see people just wanting to donate, wanting to um, give their resources and their time. Because the hope is, is that when we get people, all people inside, we will see security. We will see um, their dreams like influencing our city. Mm -hmm. We have to think about like the, you know, 12,000 people that are sleeping outside. Yeah. Some of them have the solutions to our role problems. Mm. And if we can get them into a place where they feel stable and they can think and they can use their brilliant minds, we're going to change the world. So I, <laughs> I am excited about the stability that, the, that this okay. park will bring, yeah. that our new building will bring, and that our partnerships will bring because it's through relationships that we'll see amazing change happen. Councilmember Bagshaw, I'll let you wrap up your expectations. Thoughts about cost, how this can be sustained in the future, please. Well, I put a million dollars into this year's budget, and thanks to my colleagues and the executive who approved that, we've got a good start. So we're building on the planning exercise, and yeah. that planning is already building on planning. Yeah. Walker Macy study and the SEPTED study that mm -hmm. the Alliance paid for. Right. So we've got excellent starts, and the businesses around want to participate mm -hmm. because they see this is going to benefit them too. You know, we're going to have a, an entire new building just a block north of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. One of these days is like 14 years right, in right. The waiting. Yeah, but, true, but, true. But, you know, it's coming along, and yeah. the work that's, that's done at Smith Tower, we know we talked about the Metropole building, yeah. all the way down 2nd Avenue Extension, there are opportunities for okay. more businesses, more housing. We're going to make it happen. Okay. And I love the enthusiasm that I'm seeing from these two women, because okay. that's what drives it. All right, very true. Thank you all for your input here, you. and we will be right back. I live right next to that park, so I'm very aware of just like how awful it's been. It's going to rejuvenate the life in that space and make it and make it a better place for the city overall. Maybe it would help, maybe it wouldn't. We need to figure out the resources to be able to get people in permanent supportive housing. We'd like to know what you think. Send us an email at contact at seattlechannel.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter and give us your feedback. Before we close today, it's time for our weekly CIO poll. Are you more inclined to visit City Hall Park now that it's undergoing a major transformation? Yes, no, or are you undecided? We want to know what you think. Cast your vote and weigh in with your comments at our website, seattlechannel.org slash cityinsideout. While you're there, you can watch our programs online anytime. Coming up next time, Summer Headlines. As we get ready to take a production break, we gather a panel of veteran journalists for their insights on what stories they'll be following in the months ahead. From seven city council races to two levies on your fall ballot, get the scoop next time on City Inside Out. I hope you join us.